So I'm here in our little apartment that we've just finished ready to, to put on Airbnb. Um, as you can see, I'm in the kitchen. And there's just a few little things that we've got left to do. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing is making a curtain for this doorway, just to make it a little bit more private in here. I don't know if you can see. Up here we have a like a railing. This is called a tiranta. It's actually structural reinforcing for the for the house for earthquakes. So I want to utilize this bar and make it a kind of curtain rail. I'm going to have to custom make a curtain that will go over the railing bottom. I've done one in the other room, so I'm going to go take you and show you. Here's the example of the curtain that I'm, I'm working on making. This is one I made out of an old sari that my friend Halima gave me. Um, it's a very, very pretty design. Um, the one I'm going to be making for the other room doesn't have any embroidery like this. And the reason I've chosen it is because I, I need the light to be able to come through the, into the room because um, otherwise it creates too much darkness. I've also thought it could be doubled up as a a sort of mosquito net to stop the bugs coming in. So, yeah, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a little close up of the buttons on it. So, the first thing I want to do is lay out my material and I'm going to measure for the right length that I need. I need my curtain length to be. 210 centimeters so what I want to do is add enough material to be able to to hem and to to loop over my buttons so I'm going to measure to 230 So the next thing I'm going to do is mark out my line. I'm using an Omni Grip ruler. It's the ruler that I got when I was quilting, and I've always found it to be, to be re a really good ruler. It was kind of the ruler that was recommended for, for quilting, but I pretty much use it for all projects really, so I'm sure there are other good brands out there, but I, yeah, I don't have any, any reason to plug Omni Grip per se, but if, you, if you're looking for a, a crafting ruler, I can definitely recommend it. I mean, it's, it works really well for me. So. Next thing I want to do is cut along the line that I've just drawn using Pisco's scissors. Again, these are the ones that I, I was recommended when I started quilting. So I've had these for probably about 12 years. They're still really sharp. They're a really, really good pair of scissors. So again, I don't know any other brands, but definitely if you're, if you're looking for a good pair of crafting scissors, then I wouldn't have any problem at all recommending these scissors. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, pin up my hem and I'm going to go ahead and sew it. I've already pinned it up and I did it to two inches, so I think which is kind of standard. And then I, I'm just going to go ahead and run it through a straight line on the, on the sewing machine. If you don't know how to thread a sewing machine, you can click on the link here. I'll show you how to, to thread a sewing machine. a sort of light burgundy red for my hand because I just think it looks really pretty against the, the white fabric to have a sort of contrasting colour. I mean you can use pretty much any colour you like really. Uh, I just think it looks nice and, and it picks up on some of the colours and the buttons that I chose as well. The material that I got uh, is actually prefabricated cut from Ikea that I just cut the top off of and measured to size so I've already got one hem on one side so I only need to do the, the, the top hem. 
One of the reasons I shop at IKEA is because they have a, a strong sense of corporate social responsibility and they have a really good ethical policy. They, they make sure that, that none of the suppliers are involved in child labour, that the employees are given reasonable breaks and that they don't work in excess of 60 hours. I think ideally if you can use a piece of fabric that is second hand or uh, a piece of fabric that you just have kicking about that you didn't really know what to do with, that's probably really the most environmentally friendly option that you have. Um, I couldn't do that because unfortunately that I, um, I needed a very light, specific, airy piece of, of uh, flowy fabric and so I had to go looking for it. This is a, a piece of cotton fabric. So not the most environmentally friendly of fabrics. Producing a kilo of cotton uses around 22,500 uh, litres of water. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out my buttonholes. Next I'm going to make some small incisions in the fabric, just big enough to, to get the button through. You don't, you don't really want the buttonholes to be too big because the buttons will just slide right through the holes. I just cut about as long as I think and then I take the button and I push it through. If it's a, a nice tight fit then, then I'm going to go ahead and think that that's probably about right. Next thing that I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and sew my buttonholes up. I'm doing this by hand simply because I don't know how to do it on the sewing machine. I should have probably googled it because actually it took me about half an hour each each hole. Um, that said, it's quite a meditative process if you like doing something calm and just sitting there then, then it's not a bad thing to do. But if you don't have time to do this and you want to do it quickly and you know how to do it on a sewing machine, I really recommend that you know that you go ahead and do it on your sewing machine. If you don't know how, you could do what I didn't do and just Google it. It's probably the, the easiest thing to do. If you are looking for an eco fabric then hemp is absolutely your fabric of choice. It has so many fine qualities and it's considered to be the most sustainable fabric that we have available to us. It's naturally pest resistant so it, they don't have to spray it with pesticides. Uh, the, the crop itself puts 60 to 70 percent of the nutrients that it takes back into the soil. So it's very self-sustaining in that sense. It uses about 50% of the water that the cotton industry uses. So um, it uses substantially less water to, to make the fabric. The fiber is so durable, it lasts a really long time. And so, so you're able to have a piece of, piece of clothing that lasts much longer. And so you're not having to go out and buy new, new clothes or new curtains all the time because your clothes are going to last that much longer or whatever it is that you're using the hemp fabric for. So it is without a doubt the most sustainable fabric. Uh, I'm going to do a, another video before long on the top five most sustainable fabrics just in case you're wondering what fabric can I use that's going to do the least damage to the environment. So hopefully in a few weeks I'll post that, post that video.
work out where to sew my buttons, I folded the top of the material at 2 meters 10 because that's the length that I want my curtains to be. I then marked out where I want the buttons to be through making a pencil mark through the buttonholes onto the other side of the material. I then hold my button over the pencil mark and stitch through the button at that point. the light in here is a little bit, it's not dark, it's really bright, it's just that I think that because the light's coming from the, from the doorway it's really difficult to see but um, it has a really nice airy light feel and the light's coming through but it's still working as a... a flat screen. So there it is, I'm going to give you some more detail of it. <laughs> 